Liquid Seekers, I'm Nick. EK has been the leader in custom liquid cooling for many years and they've dipped their toe in all-in-one liquid coolers before, but this time is different. This time, EK has brought a fully closed system to the table that anyone can install at any skill level. And that's exactly what this video is about because in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new EK AIO 240 DRGB liquid cooler in an AMD AIM-4 based system. Let's go. videos for demonstration purposes only this is not a review because every system every motherboard every case every fan placement and every setup is different so make sure your research will fit in your case before buying any parts for any of your pc builds now this guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the ek aio 120, 240, and 360 DRGB coolers on an AMD AM4 based motherboard. Now, this cooler does not support Threadripper, and we also have an Intel version of this video coming really, really soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that, and make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions, because chances are, I'm probably gonna answer most of those inevitable questions in this video anyway. So uh, yeah, let's uh, start off this video by answering some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard used in this video is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. The case is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Ryzen 7 3700X. Now, these parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not about discussion of or pricing or performance or even the reason why I chose these parts. I literally just picked them because, yeah, it's an AM4 based system. And let's answer some of those questions that I mentioned before. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It depends on your case and the clearances of your case. Yes, this cooler and fans have addressable RGB. Yes, your motherboard will need to have at least one addressable RGB header to use the lighting with this setup. Yes, you can put whatever fans you want on this cooler. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you like. It's, it's all good. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box with these coolers. Yes, it will work with almost every single AM4 motherboard and CPU combo you're going to ask about in the comments from probably like the launch of Ryzen up until the foreseeable future. <laughs> yes, it will work with Aurasync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB and RGB Fusion. Yes, the thermal paste is included and it's also pre-applied, but it also does include another tube of thermal paste as well. Yes, you can plug it into any five volt, three pin addressable RGB controller, including the EK Loop Connect. No, you don't have to fill the cooler up or top it up or do any maintenance on it at all. That's kind of the point of all-in-one coolers and closed loop coolers. You don't have to do anything. Okay, let's see what's in the box and how to install it. Alrighty, ladies and gents, let's take a look at what's in the box with the EK AIO 240D RGB. It's an all-in-one liquid cooler and just uh, be aware that this guide is also applicable to the 120, the 240 obviously, and the 360 cooler. And here's the installation guide that we're not going to be using, although it is quite detailed and very, very good. All right, let's take a look at what's in the box. The first thing is a bag full of all the mounting hardware, all the cables, additional thermal paste, and all of that stuff that we're going to take a look at in a little moment. Next up, we've got the two Vardar fans. Now, these are addressable RGB versions of the Vardar fans, and they are very, very nice. All right, let's uh, pop out that liquid cooler itself and take a little bit of a closer look at it. Now, you'll notice that the design of this cooler is absolutely gorgeous. I think they did quite a nice job with how this looks. And you'll also notice that there is pre-applied thermal paste on the cold plate. You can remove this if you like and use the included thermal paste that comes with this cooler as well. Okay, let's take a look at what's in the bag with all the other stuff. There is a PWM splitter for the two fans for this cooler. However, if you were to use a 360, it's a three-way splitter. Next up, we've got the Intel backing plate. Now this is for Intel desktop boards only. You do not need to use this for this installation guide, but I, I just thought I'd show you anyway, because yeah, I'm a nice guy. That's what I do. Okay. Let's take a look at the mounting brackets. Now these brackets connect to the water block itself and allow you to mount it to an Intel system like these ones and an AM4 based system, which is what this video is going to be covering. So these are the brackets we're using. There's also a tube of EK Ectotherm. Now this is to replace the thermal paste if you wanted to take it off or if you're reinstalling the cooler. And I think it's really nice that they actually included some additional thermal paste, which is quite unusual for an all-in-one cooler. 
Next up is all of the mounting gear. There is a lot of it. I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm only going to talk about the stuff that we're going to be using for this guide specifically. So here it is. We've got some screws to mount the brackets. We've got some thumb nuts. Yes, they're called thumb nuts. There's some loading springs to add extra mounting pressure to the socket, as well as the bolts that screw into the factory backplate. And yes, you do need to use the factory backplate. And obviously for this guide, we're going to be using the AM4 brackets to mount the cooler to the motherboard. Okay, let's get on with the guide. The first thing we're going to do is remove the factory AM4 mounting system, the two plastic brackets, pretty straightforward. Grab yourself a screwdriver and basically remove the four screws that are holding it all together. Now there's no uh, specific way to do this. It's very straightforward. Literally take out the four screws and once you're done removing those four screws, you can lift away both of the brackets and we can move on to the next stage. And as I mentioned previously, you do need to use the factory backing plate. So if you've used another cooler, make sure you, uh, you have this, otherwise it's not gonna be possible to install this cooler at all. Yeah, just a little bit of a heads up. So let's kick it off by installing the bolts. Now these bolts screw directly into the back plate itself. They're very easy to do and they look a little something like this if we have a bit of a closer inspection. All you need to do is screw them straight into the factory backplate. You can just finger tighten these. And what I would suggest doing is doing it in the alternating corner just to take up a bit of the pressure of the backplate so it evenly distributes itself and rinse and repeat that process until all four of the bolts are in. You'll actually notice that the thumb nut part of the bolt is plastic, which insulates it against the motherboard so it won't short out and that's a very nice touch. And with some luck, it should look something like this when you're finished. Okay, let's move on to actually installing the brackets. Now I removed the plastic protective cover. You can see the pre-applied thermal paste. And what we're going to do is mount the AMD bracket to the bottom of the cooler. First up, we're going to need these little screws. Now these screws are for actually fastening it. And this is what the screws look like closer up and we're going to need that AM4 bracket. Well, we're going to need both of them, but you get the idea. And I'm gonna show you how to do this twice. So basically the bracket slots in, it only goes on one side of the cooler, and all you need to do is literally fasten the screw in, the one at the bottom, one at the top. And we're gonna do this one more time so you can see from another angle, and you can see exactly how the brackets fasten to the bottom of the block, and yeah. It's very, very straightforward and it's one of the easiest that I've seen for any liquid cooler. Okay, now what we're going to do to make your life a little bit easier is go ahead and install the PWM splitter. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to do this now. Locate the CPU fan header and quite simply, plug that cable into your CPU fan header. And the reason why I say to do this now is because it can get tricky a little bit later and it's better just to provision the cabling right from the beginning. Now we're gonna install the fans and the radiator of the cooler. You can do this in the other order where you can do the water block first, but this is the preferred way. Now locate eight of these screws. Uh, there is other screws you can use, but I recommend these ones. Feed them through the fan, just like that, yep. Put the radiator on the front of your case, and like I mentioned, this video is for demonstration purposes only. It's only this way on this case. It might be different for yours, so make sure you research before you install this cooler in your system. I just like to finger tighten these in just uh, to hold the radiator in. I usually do it like this or I'll do opposing corners, but you can see how I'm doing it. Once you've finger tightened all of those in, grab yourself a screwdriver and just tighten them up so they don't come out. Very straightforward and yeah, it's a very easy cooler to install. And I also recommend feeding the cables through to the backside for cable management a little bit later and it will make your life a whole lot easier. Now we're going to install the thumb nuts. That's the first bit we're gonna grab and the loading springs as well because now we're going to mount the water block and cold plate to the CPU's IHS. It's very straightforward. Just lower it straight on, making sure the bolts are lined up. Get the loading spring. Put the loading spring onto the bolts that are sticking out. Get the thumb nut. That's what it looks like. That's what it's called. 
and just finger tighten one of them on just very lightly. You don't have to do it all the way. I recommend not doing it all the way for the first one and just do it on the opposing corner and rinse and repeat the process until you've got all of them and just finger tighten them as hard as you can go. I, I recommend doing this on opposing corners as well to evenly distribute the mounting pressure across the whole top of the IHS of the CPU and this is the recommended way to install any cooler on AM4 as well and once you're done finger tightening it and you can't finger tighten anymore grab a screwdriver and yeah tighten them until they stop but don't over tighten them now you'll notice you'll have two cables hanging off the water block and you're like what do i do with these well one of them is to power it and the other one is to light it up so the one to actually power the pump what we're going to do is locate a cpu opt header on your motherboard and plug that cable straight in it's a very straightforward and this will allow it to pump the coolant through the loop the next thing we're going to do is put that other cable, which is the lighting cable, through to the back, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. The next thing we're going to do is locate the PWM splitter that we plugged in at the beginning, and plug the two PWM fan cables, one from each fan, into that splitter. And that will allow both of the fans to spin so they can blow air to cool your system. Next up, we're going to start on the lighting. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this two ways. It's a three pin, five volt addressable RGB system. It uses the addressable RGB standard. I'm gonna show you the first way. Now, the fans themselves can be daisy chained. So you remove the little plastic cap to expose the additional cable for daisy chaining. And what you would want to do is plug this end in to the pins that you've just exposed and the other end will plug into your motherboard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through all this so you don't have to worry. I'm gonna show you how it's done. Basically what you want to do is plug one fan into the daisy chain. It's very straightforward and it only plugs in one way, don't worry. You can't really mess this up. What we're going to do is take the plastic cap off the other side, the one that you just daisy chained and plug the pump top sliding straight into that. And what we're gonna do is pass the other end of this cable, the one that you didn't plug into anything, we're gonna pass that through the bottom of the case, back around to the front side of the motherboard. What we're gonna do then is locate an addressable RGB header, which is here, it's a three pin connector. We're going to plug that straight in and with some luck, it should light up and the whole cooler should work. I'm gonna quickly show you a second way of doing this in case you wanna control the pump individually. What you wanna do is not follow the last step to plug it in, locate an additional addressable RGB header if your motherboard has one and then plug that cable in and now you'll be able to control the fans lighting and the pump lighting individual and with a little bit of luck it should all work and look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video and if you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below and make sure you read the comment section because myself or someone probably would have already answered all the questions you're gonna ask already and just take that into consideration before asking any questions and I only say this and I'm not trying to sound mean, I just don't want you to waste your time because yeah, I'm sure someone would have probably already answered your question. If not, it would have been me. Anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button or getting early access on Floatplane. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And as I mentioned, we've got an Intel version of these, this cooler install coming a little bit later. Uh, all the pricing and everything for this cooler should be up on EK's website as of filming this video because uh, this video is coming out with the embargo lift for reviews or whatever. And yeah, I'll put a link to all that information in the description, but the prices are already there as of filming this video anyway. So I don't know, that might be confusing. I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helped you. And if it did help you, uh, yeah, let me know and comments on all that stuff. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Yeah.
I've got all three of them. 